and next we come to the clump case. The clump K palsy. The clump K palsy it is specifically due to the injury of the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. So there is injury or involvement of lower trunk of brachial plexus. And because the lower trunk is involved, that means the roots which are involved are, so roots involved are, of course, C8 and T1. And among this two, among this two, the T1 nerve root is the one which is mainly involved. Now, when we talk about the causes for this, now over here the cause for this is undue abduction of the arm. If there is undue abduction of the arm like this, so there will be pulling or traction of the lower trunk the undue abduction of the arm which can be due to birth injury it can be due to birth injury and again it can be due to the fall from height and over here the fall on outstretched hand is there The fall is on the outstretched hand. Now, when this kind of injury is there, the sensory loss, if we talk about, the sensory loss will be in the area of C8 and T1, which is near, uh, which is uh, along the medial border of the arm and uh, the medial border of the forearm and as well as the arm over here. So, the sensory loss is along the medial border of arm and forearm. When we talk about the motor loss, that is the muscles which are involved, the muscles which are involved in the clump case is, it involves the intrinsic muscles of the hand which are mainly supplied by C8 and T1, rub, and T1 nerve roots. So the involvement of intrinsic muscles of hand, apart from this it is also involving the flexors of the forearm or we can say the flexors of the wrist over here and the fingers also. So we can simply write the flexors of forearm and the fingers they are also involved. Now as these muscles are involved it leads to a specific deformity and that is the claw hand. So deformity which we see in the clump case palsy is claw hand. In the claw hand, if we say uh, what happens in the claw hand, there is hyperextension at the level of the metacarpophalangeal joint and there is flexion at the level of the interphalangeal joints, the proximal and the distal interphalangeal joint. And at the level of the wrist also, the wrist is in extended position. So in the claw hand, in the claw hand, there is extension of metacarpophalangeal joint and there is flexion of proximal as well as distal interphalangeal joint. Now apart from this deformity that is the claw hand, another aspect which is seen in clump case is Horner's syndrome. Now this Horner's syndrome it is due to the involvement of sympathetic fibers. It is due to the involvement of sympathetic fibers supplying the head and neck region. which pass through T1, which leaves the spinal cord via T1. So as we have already said over here, C8 and T1 nerve roots involved, mainly T1. And through this T1, the sympathetic fibers, which will be supplying the head and neck area, those are also passing. So those fibers are also involved. And when these fibers are involved, it leads to Horner's syndrome. 
And when we talk about the Horner syndrome, we are having five components in the Horner syndrome. The components of this is, there are five components in this for the Horner syndrome. Meiosis, ptosis, the meiosis is the constricted pupil, ptosis is the drooping of the upper eyelid. Then we have anhydrosis, the absence of the sweating over the face and of thalmos is there, the sunken eyeball and as well as this loss of cilio spinal reflex.